The Twelve Months, a Russian folk tale. A woman had two daughters. One was her own. The other was a stepdaughter. She loved Helena, her own daughter, but hated Marushka, the stepdaughter, for she was prettier and smarter than Helena. Helena sat around in idleness, while Marushka had to cook, wash, spin, weave, bring grass, and take care of the cow. She was willing to work. She didn't know why her mother hated her, but she bore reproaches with patience. At last, the stepmother and her daughter thought only of how to get rid of poor Marushka. They tortured her with hunger and beat her, but she endured it all and grew more beautiful each day. One day in the middle of winter, Helena pretended to want violets, and she said to Marushka, Go to the woods and get me some violets. I want to put them in my belt and enjoy their perfume. But sister, what has come to your mind? I have never heard of violets blossoming in winter, answered Marushka. How do you dare to question when I command? Worthless creature, toad! If you do not go this minute to the woods and get me violence, I will kill you, threatened Helena. The stepmother seized Marushka, pushed her out of the house, and closed the door. The girl went to the forest, weeping bitterly. Deep snow was on the ground. There was no trace of a path. Long she wandered. She was hungry and cold, and prayed to God to take her out of the world. At last, off in the distance, she saw a bright light. She went toward it, and ascending a hill, she came to a fire. Around the fire, on twelve stones, sat twelve men. Three old men with long white beards, three somewhat younger, three in years of manhood, and three beautiful youths. They were sitting in silence and looking calmly on the fire. They were the twelve months. December sat in the first place. His hair and beard were white as snow. He held a scepter in his hand. Marushka stood in astonishment. But after a time, summoning courage, she drew near and asked, Kind men, will you let me warm myself at the fire? I'm shivering with cold. December nodded his head. When the maid was warm, he asked, Why are you here? I'm looking for violets, answered Marushka. But there are no violets in winter. Everything is covered with snow. I know that, answered Marushka sadly. But my mother and sister have sent me for violets. If I do not get them, they will kill me. Tell me, good shepherds, is there any place where I can find violets? December rose from his seat, went to the youngest month and said, Brother March, sit in the first place. March took the highest place and waved the scepter above the fire. That instant, the fire burned more powerfully. The snow thawed. Buds appeared on the branches and grass grew green. Beneath the trees, flowers began to open. Spring had come. In the thickets, violets were blooming. There were so many that they were like a blue carpet. Quick, Marushka, pluck them, said March. Marushka gathered a great bouquet, thanked the twelve months, and hurried home. Helena and her mother were astonished when they saw Marushka coming with a large bunch of violets in her hand. They opened the door. She entered, and the whole house was filled with the perfume. "'Where did you find them?' asked Helena. "'On a hill. There are many of them under the trees.' Helena took the violets, put them in her belt, and enjoyed their perfume. She didn't offer even one of them to Marushka. The next day, they sent Marushka for strawberries. Long she wandered around in the cold, 
praying God to take her out of the world. Then she came to the twelve months, and again met with a kind reception. Learning what she wanted, December left his place, and, going to the month sitting just opposite, gave him the scepter and said, Brother June, sit in the first place. June sat in the highest place, and waved the scepter above the fire. That instant the flames leaped high, the snow melted, the earth was covered with grass, the trees with leaves, the birds began to sing. Many colored flowers bloomed in the forest. Summer had come. Little white blossoms gleamed like stars in the grass, as if someone had put them there on purpose. Before Marushka's eyes, the flowers became fruit, and the berries were ripe. She could not look around before the grass was dotted with them, as if someone had sprinkled it with blood drops. Marushka gathered many berries and took them to her sister. Helena ate some of them and gave her mother some, but did not offer even one to Marushka. The next day, Helena wanted apples, and she sent Marushka for them. The unfortunate girl waded through deep snow and wandered around in the cold, praying God to take her out of the world. At last she found the twelve months, sitting in front of their fire as formerly. When she told them what she had been sent for, December gave the scepter to his brother September, who sat in the first place and waved the scepter over the fire. The fire burned brighter, and the snow vanished. But nature had a solemn face. Leaves were falling from the trees, a fresh wind drove them hither and thither over the dry and yellow grass. Marushka saw no flowers, but she saw an apple tree loaded with red fruit. Shake the tree quickly, said September. She shook it. One blushing apple fell. She shook it again. Another fell. Now hurry home, said September. She obeyed and carried home the two apples. Helena wondered at their beauty and so did her mother. Where did you get them? On a hill. There are many there yet. Why didn't you bring more? asked Helena angrily. No doubt you ate them on the road. I did not. I shook the tree once, one apple fell. I shook it again, another fell. They wouldn't let me shake it again. They told me to go home. May lightning strike you, screamed Helena, and she wanted to beat her sister. The poor girl began to cry. Helena ate an apple. It seemed to her wonderfully sweet. She finished and said to her mother, Give me my cloak. I'll go into the forest myself. If that good-for-nothing girl goes, she will be sure to eat the apples. I'll shake off every apple whether they permit me to or not. It's all the same to me. She put on her cloak, tied a shawl over her head, and went out. The snow was deep. There was no trace of a human foot anywhere. She wandered long, and at last she came to the twelve months. Without asking leave, Helena walked straight to the fire and began to warm her hands. "'What do you want? Why are you here?' asked December severely. "'Why ask, old man? What business is it of yours where I'm going?' answered Helena and turned to go into the forest. December frowned and raised his scepter. That moment the fire died down. The heavens grew dark. Snow fell in great flakes, as if someone were shaking feathers out of a tick, and a cutting, all-chilling wind whistled through the forest. Helena could not see one step before her. She felt that her limbs were growing stiff. She cursed Marushka and stumbled on. The mother, waiting at home, looked through the window, and ran to the gate. But hours passed by, one after another, and no Helena came. Most likely she found the apples so good that she can't stop eating them. I'll go myself and look for her, said the mother. She put on her cloak, threw a shawl over her head, and went in search of her daughter. Time passed. Marushka got supper ready and fed the cow. But neither Helena nor her mother came. 
Where are they stopping for so long? thought Marushka, and she sat down to spin. The spinning was finished. Then night came, but still they were not at home. Lord, be merciful to us! What has happened to them? said the kind-hearted girl. She looked out. The heavens were gleaming with stars, the earth glittering with snow, but no human being was visible anywhere. She closed the door, made the sign of the cross, repeated, Our Father, for her stepmother and sister, and then lay down to sleep. The next day, she looked for them at breakfast, waited for them at dinner, but in vain. They came not again to the house of living man.